Good afternoon, YouTubers. I'm not an expert. Today we're going to take a hand at making Roy Underhill's tool tote. Now, I happen to have Roy Underhill's book, Woodwright Apprentice, which has the plans in it. So here's some stuff we're going to follow along and attempt to make this project entirely with hand tools. We'll see if I give up and use power tools, but I think I can do it. So uh, let's see how it goes. Now, first thing we got to do is create some angles. And according to the book, we need an angle. He doesn't give us degrees. He just says between one and a half and five and a half on a square. I don't have a carpenter square handy. I got one down in the basement somewhere. So I drew it on my bench with a speed square. And so I'm going to set my sliding T-bevel or regular T-bevel, whatever kind of T-bevel you got. I'm going to set it at that angle. It's not super critical. So I'm just going to get it kind of close. Tighten that down. There we go. So that's the angle I'm going to work with for making the ends. First piece. Let's go cut it. Now I've drawn the first line using my bevel gauge. And I'm going to make the cut. I'm going to use this crosscut saw, which I sharpened myself, so it's probably going to make a terrible cut. We'll, we'll give it a C. Let's see how it goes. Boy, that is terrible. All right, I am not super impressed with my saw. I came prepared. What I'm going to do, since that's just kick, just kick my tripod. I got one of these modern saws because it's going to cut a lot better. I'm gonna start. Hmm. Let's just start on this side of the line. We'll just make a new cut. Not so bad. Now, how's it on the angle? Not great. But I'm going to fix that. I'll show you how I'm going to fix it in a second. The hard way, I believe, is the correct answer. We're going to break out my homemade shooting board. And we're going to put this on here if we can. We take our T bevel. We're going to redraw this angle. Right there. And let's see if we can get this. We need to redraw the angle on this side. <laughs> Everything as goofy as possible. You can see, I missed that angle quite a bit. And we'll put this on the shooting board and I'll take a piece of scrap wood like this. Let's see. Can you guys see what I'm doing? You can. Okay. And we'll put this here. Need. Okay. It's starting to look pretty good. That's pretty close. So there it is. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay. Let's take a look at that end. As I drop something on the ground. World's messiest shop. So there it is. Shooting board really cleans that up really nicely. Let's take a quick look at my homemade shooting board. I made this in just a couple of minutes. So I've got a piece of uh, melamine, three quarter inch. This was the bottom of my old Harbor Freight workbench, one of the drawers. I've been saving this for years. It's just like five sixteenths inch thick MDF and a piece of scrap plywood as the thing. Put it on here, make it as, this, as square to this as possible. None of this matters. This just holds up the, the plane. And then you want this board to be thick enough that the blade will touch it. And it's going to carve away some of it, but that's okay. Because the it'll carve away down to the end of the blade here. And then you're good. All right, let's go back over and cut some more stuff. All right, let's get this aimed right. There we go. Nine inches. Right there. And then... Went off the wrong edge, but at this point, I don't really care. <laughs> It'll be all right. It'll be fine. Didn't chunk off a big hunk of wood that time. That's my rough edge. I'm going to make it a smooth edge. It's pretty close to good. So we will put a little spacer here. That looks pretty good. Grab the Yeah, that looks pretty good. That side looks pretty good. Let's check it. Okay, pretty close. Eh, not bad. Okay, so let's compare it to this one. I have a side that's already done. Oh, look at that. That's pretty good. I just need to clean it up. So let's put it over here. We'll clean it. Just eyeballing this. I know that's a, probably the wrong way to do it. That's kind of how I do stuff. Sometimes this is... Okay. That looks pretty good. Let's see how it looks now. Did I mess it up? You know what? That's not bad. This one's just a little longer than this one. Do I want to worry about that? I will bravely try to knock a little bit of this off without screwing it up. Let's see if we can do it. We'll get it to feel so it's the same. Okay. A little bit off. A little clunky, I know. All right, that's close enough for me. I'm calling that good. So now we'll go read the instructions and see what I need to make next. All right, so I have my sideboard. Now he recommends one piece, and then we're going to split it down the center, which is going to have a couple of quarter inch wide boards. Saves weight. So I've got to figure out how to do that. I'm going to do some marking, and I'll be back. Now I've never done any resawing before by by hand 
I've done it on a bandsaw. So okay, first thing is I think this is too high. Let's move it down here where I can be a little more comfortable. saw is not sharp it does appear to be it's a 10 point saw I know I have some other ones wonder where they are A little more than a third, maybe. Not much more. All right. While we were gone, I finished cutting this in half down the center. And I came up with these two pieces. Let's see. Where did they go? They went like this. Well, can you see those? Okay. Now, here's the problem. This one came out super thin. Let's get up close. That's not even a quarter of an inch of wood left. And... It should be close to three eighths, right? And I split it in half minus the saw curve. So I should get, you know, five sixteenths or at least a quarter. So pretty thick here, very thin here. So through the magic of editing, <laughs> or just like a TV cooking show where they do everything twice, I cut another one. I wish I had that. I should back the camera a little further. So I recut it. And here's one of the problems is when you flip it end for end, you can see where I ended up with this big mess. But overall, I've got more meat. I think this will make a better side. I can make two of them, or maybe I'll make a shorter one out of that. Uh, the other ones. I can make a smaller tool tote. So the next step is going to be getting out my... Let's get rid of some of this dust. I put in my compass rose bench stop, or planing stop, or whatever you want to call it. And let's move your camera a little bit. And I've got the, it comes with a rubber protector so I don't beat up the end. And then we will grab the plane. What can you see? Can you see me working? Let's move over here a little bit. And I'll just do a little bit of planing. You're going to have to plane this big old thing flat. Okay, that's not going to work. So I need something to put underneath it. Raise it up. Let's see if one of these is flat enough to cooperate with me. on it. Now let's take a look what we got. There's still some scratches on it. There's some there. You see those? 
but pretty smooth. And it is going to be a tool tote after all, so I'm not going to kill myself perfectly smoothing these up or making them perfect thicknesses. They're relatively the same length. And I'll be honest with you, this experience is, next time I do it, I'm definitely doing that with a bandsaw, and I might be flat. Oh. <laughs> I might be flattening them with my planer. Um, it was an interesting experience resawing a board this big. I've done little ones before, small things like a box or something. But all right, let's move on to the next part, which is going to be putting some rabbits in the ends of the ends. So the next step is going to be cutting rabbits in the ends of the board. Now this wood, not free. It's very clean, so it doesn't matter what side I do it on. Nope, don't care. So I'm gonna put this here. Can you see that okay? What I'm trying to do is, uh, I need a stop for it, but I also need it to be clearing the end so that the, uh, the fence on my Stanley 78 doesn't hit the vise or the bench top because it sticks down low enough that when I get down there, it will. So this needs to be out in the air. So I'll put a piece of scrap wood, hold fast. There we go, that'll work. So I'm gonna take a quick look at the Stanley 78. It's got a depth fence, it's upside down, but depth fence. It has a knicker. Only one of the three knickers appears to be sharpened. Interesting, I thought they all would be. And it's got a, uh, a fence. And then I have this set to about three-eighths of an inch by about a quarter. I'm just eyeballing it. Um, depth adjustment is here. Blade, all that's a simple blade. And it has a forward position on it if you wanted to do like bullnose work, get up very close. I've never used that. Of course, I haven't used this much at all anyway. Um, pretty nifty little plane. Now, it has the knicker right there is to cut the fibers. You don't need that when you're going with the grain, but cross grain, it's a nice idea. Help to keep the edge cleaner. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag it backwards. So the knicker makes a line. Then I know where, first thing is it gets it a head start. Can you see that line okay? Let me get you in here real close. So the knicker has drawn this line, right? And that's severed those fibers for the first cut. And that'll keep it from having tear out, hopefully. But at the end, you can have some blowout as that blade comes across the end. So I'm going to take my uh, finest saw, finest toothed saw. And you could do this with any saw, or you could probably come in here with a knife and pre-cut it a little bit. But what I want to do is just get those fibers cut right here. So... They don't blow out so easy. They probably still blow out a little. Let's find out. And there's what it's a pretty thick cross grain shaving looks like. This is pine, so I have it set to take a fairly thick cut because the wood is, you know, very easy to cut. Now, interesting, I can see, I don't know if you can see, let me get you in here close again. The quality of the cut where these, where this sort of closer growth rings are, it's rough. And then here where it's more flat, pretty smooth, and it gets rough again where the rings are. This is not, I don't have it super sharp. I, I just sharpened it, but I didn't really take the time to get it perfect. Um, if it was sharper, you know, I think I could get a better cut, but this is going to be hidden and there's a tool toe. So I think it'll be okay. So that was one. We just cut one real quick. That was easy. Loosen that up, flip it around. Let's see, get it so it's off the end. Put my nice and solid. I'm going to do the same thing. Is it still in the picture? Okay, good. That look good. Let me back this up a little bit. Is that good? We'll see if you like that. 
Okay. Oh, just blew some out the back. That was clumsy. Oh, well, no one's going to see it. Um, where did my... And I'm just eyeballing this. I'm not too worried about it. Oops. Got to get it on the right spot. Okay. Did you see that? Big chunk came out of there. Because I cut that off, it didn't spread. And even if I was doing this with a, with a router on a router table, that's always a threat. I watched a guy at a woodworking show one time who was really good at using a, a router one-handed. And he would go backwards. A, a, you know, there, you basically go against the cut. He would go with the cut to fix all this stuff. And he had really good control over the router. Much better than I can do. And he was able to use that router. Just amazing. Of course, he you know, was getting paid for it. Okay, I'm going to call that done. Looks pretty even. So I have the same rip saw that I used earlier. This is uh, eight point, and I did some reading, and for resawing, people recommend like a four or five point saw. And as you may re remember from earlier in the video, my resawing wasn't a lot of fun. So we'll, I'm going to use it for this. As soon as I get it started. Am I on camera? Not very on camera. You guys get all the glamour of watching. some holes and if I do these here that's not going to leave nearly enough meat on top. If I do them down here that's better. I'm just going to do them right at that center line. That will leave me a little over an inch and an eighth of meat. So let's start cranking. Now there are a lot of ways to get all this meat out of the middle. I'm going to do it with a chisel. It's how it's recommended in the meat book. I don't have anything to pull from this side. But it doesn't much matter, does it? Out. Using a really big chisel. Just mostly for the fun of it. Oh, that's huge. Really too big. I made that almost two inches. Inch and a half would have been fine. Carefully try not to cut into my Bench top. Hold up. All right there. Oh, let's see it. Perfect. Okay, so that will go into a hole that I'm going to cut in here at some point. All right. Figure. I would say that about 90% of what I do is based on luck. So I did this end. I cut the notch in it. Go into the end of the board. I'm going to do this end. And I made this board now is just a little short of what it needs to be to match the sides. Because I think it'll be easier to trim the sides a little to make them fit perfectly, get the gaps out of it. All right. This Feels step good. is going to be cutting the ends so that I can put this handle in them. So I did that one. It came out pretty good. It's real tight. A chunk of wood missing there. Um, so 
what I've done is I laid it out, found the center point, measured three eighths of an inch from either side. This is wood's about perfectly three quarters. It's perfect enough. And then I just chiseled it out by eye. So here it is. On this one, I'm going to start with a three quarter inch chisel. I'm just going to go around and do it. Of course, now that you're watching, I'm going to screw it up. The other one came out pretty good. And I'm not too worried that the edges are going to be perfect or anything. I think everything's on camera here. So I'll just come over here. Start knocking some wood out. At this point, most of this isn't going to be very visible at all, if at all. So what I want to show you, what I want to show you is how this fits. So with the sides in place, that end well, fairly tight. Come down here and we'll see this is how much shorter the center is than the sides. See, now I need to trim the sides. And also you can see that this angle, that end looks pretty good. Uh, I think this end I need to work on a little. So I need to take and get this to be a little more vertical. So that means I need to take about a quarter of an inch off the top here, and maybe an eighth of an inch off down at the bottom. So I'm going to mark that. Okay, so I'm just going to do this by eyeball using my straight edge, which is scrap wood, and any old pencil. I sharpen my pencil with my fancy pencil sharpener. Look at that. Did that focus? You guys should see how fancy. Oh, perfect. Okay, so I said I wanted about an eighth at the bottom and about a quarter at the top. So there's that mark. And eighth at the bottom, about a quarter at the top. I'll see if I can do them both at the same time. Okay. That looks pretty good. Bring it down here. Okay, so I tightened that up quite a bit and made it a little more parallel, but I still need to take off a little less than an eighth. 364ths. We'll find out. All right, so it's time to figure out the bottom. And what we know is that the bottom is going to be a three quarter inch board that goes right across the bottom of the ends here. So for width, it's going to be that's five and it's about really going to be about five and a half, maybe not quite, and about three quarters of an inch up. It's going to be about five and three quarters. So I need a board a little more than five and three quarter inches wide. So I'll go find something. And uh, so I transferred that angle to the end of the board, messed that up with two, and then drew a straight edge line. So I'm using the top edge of the far side and this line I'm going to try and plane down to. Let's see if I can do it without ruining a piece of wood. That's almost perfect. You guys see that at all? That's, you know, it's not perfect. I bet I, I, bet I can put it just a hair flatter. See how that looks. Mm, went the wrong direction. Okay, the hair steeper. Okay, I'm calling that good. It's not perfect. It's pretty close. So now I've got to figure out how to mark the other side. 
I think I'm just going to do that's that angle pretty close. I'll get in there with a pencil. Pretty much. I can't okay, see so where it's supposed to be. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. All right. All right. The book recommends using nails. And since this wood is rather thin, I'm going to pre drill. Some holes. Not sure how many I really need. I'll do three to start with. Come on. Oh, there you go. A little closer to the edge, maybe. And do the other end. There we go. That is glue on. I think everything needs glue. There's this bad boy in there. You know what? Well, glue on the end grain it isn't going to hurt anything. I want to make sure the bottom stays inside. And I'm gonna go see, get that out of the way. Let's get out of there. There we go. Take that one, put a nail in it. Okay. Okay. So here it is. Uh, after that step, I glued and nailed the ends, pre drilled those holes. Right, put a clamp on it because I want the, uh, the get gaps to be as tight as I could get them, and I needed a clamp to do that. And there's a look inside. The gap will be sealed up when we glue the bottom, and the bottom's still loose right now. I did a little bit, just a little bit of sanding on that. Took my block plane and rounded these edges over. So it's pretty crude, but it's going to hold tools and shop junk. And we'll see how it, we'll see how it works out. Um, see. All right, here we are at the conclusion. Everything's glued and dried. I took the plane and a sanding block, and I've cleaned up the ends. That one looks pretty good. Now it's got some gaps. There it is. I'll give you an idea. So now. There's a gap there too. I think the same gap. Oh, there's some gapage. Yeah, there's a gap and here's a gap. But I, I kind of rushed a little because I had the camera running. I think it would be pretty easy to eliminate those gaps. I think also the order of assembly I should do differently. I think next time I will put the ends on here, then fit the bottom, then fit the sides. And I think it'll go together with a lot better precision. Now, what I'm thinking about doing is making another one, but doing it all power tools and see how it compares. This was entirely hand tools. I used no motor powered anything. 
If I do one with all power tools, I'll have to see how I'm going to make these, uh, you know, these uh, mortise and tenons here in the end. I might have something that'll work. It might not. I'll come up with, there's a way. I'll figure something out that'll work. I can do it all with electricity. Um, so that'll be the next project, I think. I think I'll make another one. I'll make it a little shorter. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you later.